Hello, Jesse Good here with a review of the LEGO Stranger Things The Upside Down set, which has 2,287 pieces, eight minifigures, and it retails for $200, where it was just released today all around the world at LEGO stores and LEGO shop at home. This was provided to me by LEGO, but all opinions in this video are my own. The first minifigure we'll take a look at is Will Byers. Now, he has a new torso print, a new color for the mid-leg piece, which is light royal blue, a new facial expression, as well as a new piece for his hair altogether, which is much more detailed hair piece than we have in other Lego themes. This design, I think, is not totally necessary. They could have used one of the existing bowl cut pieces, but hey, it's a new hair piece altogether. I'll still take it. But I wish some of the other minifigures of this set would have had a new hair piece as opposed to Will. Now, his alternate facial expression looks much more scared, and his back torso printing is neat as well. Next is Mike Wheeler, who has the mid legs in dark green, which is exclusive to the set so far, with a really cool torso print. Also, a pretty interesting face print where he doesn't look so pleased on one side. Walkie talkie and flashlight accessory. And then at the back, more torso printing, as well as an alternate face where he looks pretty ticked off, if you ask me. Next is Eleven, and she has her wigged appearance, which eh, I would have rather had a new hair piece for just her regular hair from season one. Now, that would have been really hard to do in Lego with such a thin design. She has a waffle as an accessory, which you get two of in the set, one as an extra, which is a printed one by one, a new printed torso, a new color for mid legs in white, uh, the skirt right here, and she does not have any alternate face, unfortunately, which that would have been cool to get a different expression, though I guess they can't really do the bleeding nose expression. She does really wear this expression at the front throughout the first season, so I don't mind too much. Here is Dustin Henderson, and he's probably my favorite figure of the set. Love that torso print, which is really detailed, but this hair hat combo is entirely new and exclusive to the set as a piece. That is so detailed as well with some dual molding for the top of the hat and for the hair separately. You can get a look at his back torso printing. Also, his front facial expression is absolutely hilarious. And the back, he has a more shocked expression, which is pretty funny as well. He is kind of the comic relief of the show, so I don't mind too much. And his little accessory to the left is a printed one by two towel of his compass. And he also has an accessory of walkie-talkie. The last of the kids is Lucas Sinclair with a new torso print that's really detailed, a new face print, and a new slingshot coloring, which I really like how that turned out. The design of this bandana at the top is new as well. I mean, this was an existing piece from series 16, was it? And it's recolored here to have that camouflage printing. And in my opinion, that works really well for what they were going for. I just wish the top of his hair was a little bit more detailed like the show, but it's just nice part usage, so it's not a big deal. He had some back torso printing there, but unfortunately no back facial printing, but that kind of makes sense since his bandana doesn't cover up the back of his face, so he just have like a double-sided face showing all the time. So they just went with this one single shocked expression. Here is the minifigure for the Demogorgon, which the design of this is freaking awesome. I mean, I love how this came out. It uses the gremlin legs, as we call them, from LEGO Dimensions. It uses claw pieces as well, and a totally new headpiece up here, which has such a cool design to it. I love the printing in the front, which is perfectly creepy. And if you want to have it as a closed mouth, as they call it, underneath, they give you a design for that on a minifigure head. That's freaking awesome. No back printing on that minifigure head, though, but still super cool, in my opinion. The Joyce Byers minifigure has a flashlight, this 2x2 two two drawing of Will the Wise, which will probably come into play in Season 3, and a perfect torso print that's new, a face print that looks a lot like Winona Ryder, so that's pretty cool, the hair piece of Hermione from the 2018 Harry Potter sets, so that's kind of cool to see that outside of that line. I hope it gets introduced in more themes. And she has a more shocked expression at the back of her head. And the last minifigure of the set is Chief Hopper, which his face print's pretty good. I just wish that he had a hair hat combo. That would have been a great new piece because him missing the hair is a little bit off. It doesn't really look too much like him without the hair at the back, as thin as the hair might be. But that is a new torso print, and he also has a cup as an accessory. So the build of the set is very neat, but very complex. You have the buyer's house and then the buyer's house in the upside down. That is connected via these beams right here with three mini ball joints. You also have a build for Chief Hopper's car and also the stand right here for the minifigures. 
Before we take a look at those closer details of the interior and exterior, I want to make two more broader points. First off, this is super easy to flip around. You fear that maybe that police car would just fall off, but it's actually put on there with a very sturdy little piece. Now to get a closer look at each of the builds of the houses separately, you can separate them. It's not very easy. You just got to remove these beams at the front, at the sides, and then at the back. Now, the beams usually have either this branch on them, which is a nice dark brown piece, or a one-by-one one circular tile on it, which gives it just a little bit of a, I guess, neutral look so that it doesn't look so intrusive that they have these beams on here connecting the two builds. There's also a set of beams on each of the side tree builds connecting those two houses together. These are some of the hardest to put on, and also some of the ones that make the most wreck if you uh, or make the most biggest mess if you disconnect them because lego kind of puts them on the side part there's a lot of loose pieces around there which means you can't really display the two builds separately with the trees because the trees are really just a way to connect the two houses finally there's the last set of beams at the back which i just have to recommend not taking this apart like i'm doing now because it's really a model that is meant to be displayed with the top house and bottom house together. But this is it. And with those two builds removed from one another, we could take a closer look at each of the buildings individually on their own. The first of which is the buyer's house in our world, which does look a bit bland if you don't have all the flavor that they add to the set. But any kind of blandness is expelled once you put the kids looking for Will, Chief Hopper's car, Joyce, Hopper, and the bike. So it doesn't really matter too much. But for now, I really like this overall look of a house straight out of the 1980s or maybe even today in a lower income area. The design of this does have a few problems at the front though. You can see with these columns, they don't really stick on too well. You guys always get on me for pushing down pieces, but I will guarantee this time it's not my fault. As much as you want to push these down, the six by eight slopes are a piece that's really not, I guess it doesn't have the clutch power of some of the other pieces is the best way to put it. And what happens is it ends up lifting up a bit and then you have these columns just kind of wobbling about, especially it gets so loose, sometimes they just fall over and fall off. I think they should have done maybe like a one by two plate instead of using a one by two jumper that might've given it a little bit more of a clutch power to the top roof. It's a small problem, but it is quite annoying. Now there are those two vehicles of the set the first of which being the Hawkins Police Department car, which does rest on that one two by two jumper shown earlier. Cheating a bit, the design of this is based off of a 1980 Chevrolet K5 Blazer, which does give a very classic look overall with the color scheme and whatnot. I like how it not only has a nice retro exterior, but the interior actually has a lot of volume to it. You could easily remove this center part right here to put your minifigure in and in the back there's a space to put a pumpkin which is this newer pumpkin piece that is used in the Harry Potter sets as well a reference to season two from my understanding and that just rests on a two by two jumper and again they do have a little area to remove hopper but oddly enough it's not like a studded area rather they just use some of those pizza slice pieces as I call them but they're the round corner one by one tile pieces the sides have the Hawken Police Department logo, which are stickers on both parts. There's also a sticker at the back for the license plate. And I like how they built the underside of this side door with these double cheese slopes. Also how they built the front with the grill and using these brick pieces, or, or I guess I call them the gold brick pieces. It ends up with a very nice look in general. They also include a bike in the set, which does use the bike frame in black. That's actually really rare because we haven't gotten one of those since, what, 2005 in that color? It is a classic saddle bike frame, by the way, which I'm amazed works so well with mid-legs in general. Underneath the car, there's just some rock designs. There's a stone pathway leading to the front door, which there's this sticker showing the house number there. Also a little doormat, a bucket. There's a bench to the right where you could fit one, maybe two minifigures with a very tight fit there. You may notice this new print, which is the newspapers covering up the windows. That's a panel piece. You get four of them in this area right here. Two of them are cut off by the roof up top. Sorry about that. And then to the left, you also get two more of those, as well as a little seat with a table to the side of it. And to the far right of the front porch, we have a swing 
which the instructions say is a reference to the Evil Dead. And the instructions in general reference a lot of violent media from the 80s, like some Stephen King books and whatnot. Just interesting, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I just was kind of cool to actually learn what some of these references were too. There's more stickers to the side of the house, also more of that design using those tile pieces on the modified bricks with the studs at the side and same similar design to the side right here with two windows and whatnot. Now it's time to look inside the house, which they only do two rooms, the living room and Will's room. The right area of the living room has a D&D &D sticker, which shows the rule book, also a little love seat right there and a plant. And at the back, you can notice some boxes, which one of them has a sticker that shows it's for Christmas. It's kind of hard to see there. And going into the main section of the living room, there's actually a whole play feature here, which illustrates one of the most iconic scenes from the show where Joyce uses the Christmas lights to illuminate special letters to communicate with Will. And how that's activated is you just press on this light brick here and it will light up some of the letters. It's not really that useful in terms of what they were going for here, but it's just a cute idea. How they actually get that to work is that the front has one of these one by two pieces with a special print on it. And this is one of those divider pieces. And so the light shines through those certain holes to illuminate certain letters. And the alphabet is just a big sticker on a panel piece where it's actually a pretty nice decoration in general. Aside from the alphabet, there's a sticker for a missing poster of Will Byers. Also, there's a sticker on the side wall of just the wall set up with some pictures, some mail and whatnot. A nice telephone in yellow, which I think is the first time we're getting that piece in that color. I like how they built uh, the couch right here with uh, that uh, sand yellow color that I really like. And there's even a bear trap detail, which is pretty nice though. Wasn't that set up by Jonathan? Where's Jonathan? He needs to be in this set. There's also this uh, ax just being held by the side of the door, which is also another nice reference to the show. For Will's room, there's a bed set up. There's a boom box at the back, a nice lamp design. And one of my favorite parts of the set is not only these stickers right here for DND, &D, which is really cool with the dragon and whatnot, but more specifically, there's this poster of Shark, my favorite movie, Shark. You guys ever seen the movie Shark? Yeah, that's a pretty epic movie. You know, real talk, they couldn't do Jaws, so they just kind of replicated the Jaws poster. And this is on a two by three, so I could see a lot of people using this for their setup in their own Lego room or whatnot. That's gonna be quite useful, though. I wish it was printed. Finally, at this angle, you could see some drapes inside the house. And at the top, we have a little bit of an attic design. And to the right, we have two accessories. There's a two by two sticker tile of the Mind Flare, which is a season two thing that just rests on two two by two jumpers. And also there's this hat right here, which is a new color and design for the wizard hat piece, which plays into season three for Will the Wise, apparently. Not entirely sure what that's all about. As well as to the left, there's one more accessory. And that is Bob's camera from season two, which rests on a modified one by two plate. And it uses two older pieces, which also includes an older one by two print for a tape. And wrapping up the real world buyer's house, I have to say that while I didn't like the front roof design for how it kind of pops up, I think this back roof design is actually really interesting in how it's built and a lot more sturdy. And while I said the buyer's house in the regular world looked kind of bland without minifigures, I think the one in the upside down looks really interesting without the minifigures where there's a lot of overgrowth, there's a lot of creepy just designs and whatnot. But this is a mirrored version of the one in our real world with some great pieces like these branch pieces in dark blue. But now I'll say the porch swing is to the left of the build. Uh, the seating area is to the left of the door. Uh, the seating area to the left and the real world one is now to the right. I like how it's all switched around. You get that uh, sticker, but instead this time around it's on a gray base. Also, there's that printed newspaper covering the window design, but now it's with a gray design and even a little bit of rips to it, which is quite interesting. So it's nice that they went out of their way to do two separate prints for that. I also like little details like how they use the whip piece to kind of make like a dark or kind of a black vine over the columns, which yeah, the columns have the same problem that the one in the real world has, unfortunately. Also, it's nice getting this piece in this smoky black kind of translucent coloring. 
but let's go and enter the house which there's more of the upside down versions of the stickers from the original build with that alphabet in a much darker coloring. Also, we have the Will Byers missing poster on a gray two by two this time around. Still very nice to get uh, two versions of that poster. This one has some rips. There's that same sticker once again, but with a lot more muted colors and also a telephone as well. And at the top, the Christmas lights have no color whatsoever. The plant is just this dull gray vine in this version, also another version of the love seat from the original build. There's a stickered D&D uh, &D rule book here, but uh, this version is a lot grayer. And also there's the Xmas box once again, which is a sticker, but of course that's the upside down version as well. For Will's room, the boom box is still the same color, but the shark poster is now all muted, as well as the design on the side of his drawings, which is once again a sticker on the side wall. Speaking of side walls, the side design of the house is very similar to the original one, but now it has just a lot creepier details. Still have stickers on the side part here. Also, I like how they use a lot of sand blue for the side wall designs of this house in general, which once again uses uh, those modified bricks with the studs on the side. And you have a little bit of brown pieces as well, just for extra detailing. But keep in mind, right here is where the trees kind of pass through and connect the two builds. And finally, the top roof of the house has more of those dark blue branches and brown branches, which just add a little bit more detailing to it. But overall, it's the same general build. And of course, when you put those two back together, it's such an interesting display, even from the back, just seeing how this interior is flipped into the upside down with a lot of the same builds, but in much muted colors and darker looks overall. And for the last part of the main build, there's the trees, which keep in mind that the regular world version and the upside down version at the bottom are the same build, as in they are actually connected. They connect via those mini ball joints shown at the beginning to the main build to keep them together. And you build that same exact tree build and just put it on the reverse side to the left. So that is actually the same build as the one to the right. So it does get very tedious. I would actually recommend uh, getting two builders for this. One for the upside down stuff and for one of the trees and then one for the regular world stuff and the other tree. But much like the build for the house, it's hard work that pays off because the design of this uses some great creepy elements, especially with the upside down version of the trees, where they use the dark blue branches once again. Also getting this piece in that smoky black color is really neat. And getting the reef piece in black is kind of hard to find. Uh, the branch pieces in brown, just an overall creepy look in general. And there's even a stickered element just on the one to the right for the upside down tree and then on the one for the left for the regular world tree with a Barbara Holland missing poster. And here's that same poster on the regular tree to the left of the build. And in general, the real world tree is a lot less interesting than the ones they do for the upside down. But still, I like how they align some of the pieces like using the sausage piece to get the branches in certain angles, using the fork piece to get the branches in certain angles. And there's not too much else going on there with the build. And unfortunately, to make it so that the whole build rests easy, they make the treetops really bland where they just put these tiles on the top. I get it, they can't put extra branches because then it would be a wobbly build or whatnot, but it's kind of lame considering how detailed this middle section is. And that goes for the upside down versions of the trees. Again, using smooth pieces at the top to make the build easy to rest on. Which, taking a look at these separately, you'll see that there's not much detail on this fourth side right here. Well, if you see by the mini ball joints, that's actually the part that connects the two buildings together. So it makes sense why they didn't have too much stuff sticking out there. So the only build totally separate from the other build is this Stranger Things stand for the minifigures. But it's for some of the minifigures, I could say, because they only have four spots. Why? Like, why not put eight spots or just not include this at all? I mean, these characters fit on the buyer's house, so I don't know what they're doing here. I mean, I guess Chief Hopper is more involved with Joyce's story, who's also trying to find Will, and you put the Demogorg in there. But still, I, I think you could just easily display these on the house. This is kind of an unnecessary thing. But it does have a nice sticker of the logo for the show. That's kind of neat. But really, if it was up to me, either have eight stands or not include this at all. So this is the one time I don't mind my box being damaged, because it kind of adds to the 80s style look of this. I love how they actually have an inverted version of the box, which means you could flip it to display it either way you want. 
Though I kind of wish they used the old 80s style Lego logo, but that's just a nitpick. And the back shows the tons of play features found within this set, including the whole flipping feature explained. Love how that came out. The instructions are modeled to be case files from H&L, which is pretty awesome. And inside, as I kind of alluded to earlier, they reference some interesting properties like Cujo and Christine here. And you do have an introduction with uh, different character profiles and whatnot and scenes from the show, which I really like. It's almost like a Lego Ideas booklet in that sense. Oh, and here is that Evil Dead reference right there. And also they even mentioned Dungeons and Dragons by name, which is quite interesting because Dungeons and Dragons is owned by Hasbro from my understanding, which is a direct competitor to Lego. So overall, this isn't a time where Lego wanted to make a quick buck off a license. Rather, they put so much time and effort into this build to not only draw in fans of the show, but also people who just like cool Lego builds in general. Getting an 80s style house in Lego is new in itself, but then having that flipped and inverted into this twisted dark version for the upside down is so cool. Seeing how that all comes together and resting on the bottom of the treetops is like so impressive and mind blowing. People didn't even believe that this would be so stable, but here it is. And having the interior design have such a nostalgic feel, but also have something for the fans of the show loaded with references here and there is just such a cool thing. The minifigures, don't even get me started on the minifigures. They're amazing. With all these new torso prints, new colors for pieces, and even new pieces altogether, like the Demogorgon head, Will's hair, and Dustin's hair hat combo, which will all be useful in different situations. Of all that considered, I think the price for $200 is excellent for this. You get so much packed into this $200 set. There are some flaws though. For example, I don't like how this roof is built at the front where these columns never seem to connect. Even if you push them down, they'll just pop back up. That's quite annoying. I also don't like how the minifigures seem to be missing three key characters, which are the older teens of the show. And finally, the one last thing I don't like about it is the stand right here. I think the stand looks incomplete in a way. They should have had eight spots for the eight minifigures of the show or just not include it all together. But the stand is just a little extra, so that's not too big of a problem. But the roof thing is probably the most annoying part to me besides wishing that there was more minifigures for the characters if this is a one-off set in general. But with all that considered, I'd rate this one a B plus. I highly recommend it if you're just a fan of Lego in general. And if you're a Stranger Things fan, what am I saying? You're gonna buy it right away. So that's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Special thanks to Lego for giving me this early and I'll see you guys later. Peace out, bye.